Fellas, AC here. Welcome to another review. Today I'm going to review a very special vetiver fragrance. Amouage Portrayal. Now, I've had this fragrance in my collection for nearly two years now. And I've used quite a chunk of this fragrance. So, I'm going to share with you my experience, my views and thoughts on this very special fragrance. I am a lover of the note of vetiver and I've got almost all vetiver fragrances which are considered the greatest ever. And in spite of that, when I smelled this fragrance, this fragrance confused me the most in terms of vetiver and how it smelled. And it took me a long time to understand what this fragrance is all about. So let's start with the basics. Amorage Portrayal, man, I always get confused with this and the other one. Uh, imitation, I don't know why, because I've reviewed Imitation. That is another very, very artistic fragrance. Portrayal came in 2019, and it's one of those later stage, uh, you know, Christopher Chong creations before he left Amorage. And I really think he left at a very wrong time. He left Amorage at a very wrong time because he was basically coming of age. You know, he joined Amorage in 2007, left I think last year when I did this big video on Amorage collection that I have. And I think it takes a person to at least a decade to understand what a brand is all about, I think. Um, and he left when he was coming of age. He was really transforming into this um, massive Amorage oracle, if you like. He knew everything about Amorage and he was churning out amazing fragrances. So this is from that era, towards the fag end of um, Christopher Chong's amazing, illustrious career with Amouage. So Christopher Chong being the creative director, uh, enlisted the services of um, Pierre Negrin for this fragrance. Now this fragrance, when I first tried it, I, did, I was confused. I did not enjoy it as much as I expected to because the first thing I smelt was a, a kind of a Fahrenheit um, reference, if you like, a, a sort of a, a salute to Fahrenheit. And having smelt Fahrenheit and having worn Fahrenheit in its early years, you know, I'm talking about 1997 is when I bought Fahrenheit. I was kind of sort of, yeah, OK, kind of a reaction to it. But then I started wearing it again this spring and I was quite surprised by this fragrance because this time I approached it not from a Fahrenheit point of view excuse me I approached it from an Amouage creation and that to a Christopher Chong creation because he always always brought to the table something amazing yeah and I was really really happy that I did that I changed my mental approach to this fragrance so let's start I've already got it dry down it's about eight, nine hour old dry down. It's going beautifully at the moment in my skin, so I'm not gonna disturb that dry down. But I'll walk you through what you smell when you first spray. When you first spray, you smell violet leaf. Yeah, and it's been presented in a way, uh, sort of, which reminds you of, I mean, violet leaf is so synonymous with um, Fahrenheit, you sort of, immediately your mind goes towards Fahrenheit. So that sort of, Fahrenheit-ish violet leaf is what you smell when you first spray. And if you look at the notes breakdown on Fragrantica, they will have you believe that this amorage, like no other amorage, only has three notes, which is another thing which I got stumped with. Now, I use my own scent memory to come up with the pyramid because I checked the amorage website and that again is half of the story. So when you first spray, you smell a smoky diffusive scent along with violet leaf yeah so you get the violet leaf leaf and you get this green diffusive smell it's not vetiver but it's very green and diffusive it's as if you're in nature and you're smelling everything so let me put a picture up and this is what the scent smells like this is the this is the scenario or scenery that is painted in my mind. It's a diffusive, dusky or early morning sort of a smell, which has the smell of woods, earth, wo um, trees, leaves, greens, and violet leaf. 
So that's the kind of a smell that you first smell. It's very smoky, but not in the incense kind of a way, but more diffusive, airy, excuse me, powdery smell. Yeah. When the fragrance becomes about five, 10 minutes old on your skin, that's when you start to smell other notes, which should be there in the notes breakdown. Number one that I smell is vetiver, along with a very, very creamy orris butter. And it's it has a tinge of alcohol and a tinge of sprightly juniper berries, all mixed together with the smell of violet leaf. It has the sweetness, which is almost like an orangey sweetness. Yeah, so tangy sweetness, powdery, creamy, green earthy vetiver and violet leaf. The fragrance at this moment is still trying to settle on your skin. And when it settles down, the sweetness becomes a little less prominent and the powdery creaminess becomes a little less prominent. And then comes the beautiful note, which has always bothered me. I could not put my finger on it until this year when I started wearing it in spring, which is the right time to wear it. And you get this amazing, wonderful, lush note of cognac. And I was absolutely stunned because I kept on thinking that this must be gin. My mind was telling me it's something else and my conscious scent memory was telling me there has to be gin because juniper berry gin goes together. But what they've done, done is they've used juniper berries along with Cade, creamy Cade, and then put in this master stroke of cognac. Amazing cognac, very rich, deep, in its full glory. Yeah, It's almost like you're taking cognac out of a barrel and having a little you know, tasting session. That sort of experience of cognac. Amazing. And this is the missing piece of the puzzle. This, this is why I think I waited so long uh, to review this fragrance. The cognac is amazing and makes sense because cognac, they've used, uh, they released two fragrances in 20, 2019. One was this portrayal and the other one was Overture. Overture is all about spicy cognac. So I, it makes sense to reuse some of the cognac from Overture into portrayal. Absolutely amazing. The last, you know, the penny dropped for me when my brain settled on the smell of cognac. Amazing scent. So that's the scent really. It's got, it, there's another note, which is the fragrance has a very waxy tone to it, which is almost reminiscent of a waxy leather smell. And that actually makes an appearance in the middle stages after about 10 minutes. So you get this leathery, beautiful vetiver mixed with cognac, orris root butter. It was absolutely amazing. This experience was amazing. The juniper berries as well, cade oil. A slight terpenic smell sometimes, but I didn't get it today. Brilliant fragrance, guys. Absolutely amazing experience. So, upsides and downsides. Like any Christopher Chong creation, this one is a story. And it's a story which takes a long time for you to, you know, get hold of. It's up to you. You experience it yourself. I'm sitting here in my study working from home and I'm enjoying it. I'm making mental notes and, and that's when the story un unravels itself. And that's a Christopher Chong trademark. He sells you a story in a bottle. Every single fragrance that I own from his time, an amouage, is a story. And this is a marvelous story. Absolutely amazing, unusual notes. And this sort of vetiver was superb. Loved it, absolutely loved it. So if you're looking for interesting, complex, niche experience, another one. Definitely put it down in your to try list. Second thing, vetiver solid floors, as I said, it is so easy now because you smell vetiver, you'll know because you a third of men's fragrances contain vetiver. So vetiver, vetiver mask, vetiver woods, it's so common, but to do this with vetiver is exemplary. Absolutely out of this world. Brilliant experience, brilliant uh, concept, the way he conceptualized with Pierre Nagarin, amazing vetiver experience. If you, if you like vetivers, put this in your two try list, absolutely. Third one would be value for money. Now, amouages are expensive, but as I said, every single amouage is a lovely story. This one is a lovely story. So value for money, I would happily spend the full bottle price, which is quite expensive for this sort of an experience, absolutely. 
downside. Well, for money, some people may not like it because it's less wearable. I got the best experience wearing it in spring and that too, mid spring. Yeah, when it's too cold, it's a, it's a bit too spicy and sweet. So it becomes like an amber smelling fragrance, right? When it's too hot, it again becomes too sweet for me. So I'm thinking to myself, what is the right time to wear it? Spring. And hence the value for money is low because there is only one season in my experience where portrayal smells exactly like it should smell. And that's mid spring, spring, mid spring. Um, the other downside would be, this is a serious fragrance. Yeah? This is not for compliments and none of the amouages are. Most of the amouages are not. So most people buy fragrances to impress other people. Very few people buy fragrances to impress themselves. So if you're in the other category, the first category, this will not make sense to you. You'll not pull anybody. You'll not impress. Most people wouldn't even get this. And uh, yeah, it wouldn't give you the satisfaction of spending 350 pounds for 100 ml. So that's the other downside. Yeah. So it is not for everybody. It is for very few people who really appreciate the note of vetiver and who appreciate an experience of the fragrance. So let's talk about performance, like any amouage. This is such high quality materials, right? So this one projects beautifully for two to three hours, one spray only from my decant. Uh, what does it do in terms of um, projection in cold weather and warm weather is almost the same. So because it's so high quality and so dense and rich, I wouldn't wear this in summer, but I tell you, projection, never a problem. Two to three hours easy. Longevity, again, not a problem. It'll last for about 16, 20 hours on your skin quite easily and happily and keeps evolving and changing. Sillage, again, strong. Put one under your shirt, you move, you smell it. So if you put it on your shirt, which you can, uh, there are no challenging notes here. I think one or two sprays will do the job. Seasons to wear. I would say the best season to wear this fragrance is spring, as I mentioned. Occasions, dress up. If you're immaculately dressed, any occasion, work, business meeting, business travel, this is a traveler's fragrance. This is the way it smells. It's like a traveler's fragrance. Absolutely. Well dressed, go for this. Daytime, best. Um, compliment factor, low. Depends on who smells you. If they're a vetiver lover, they're, if, you're, if they're a lover of uh, powdery, creamy fragrances with boozy aspect, they might compliment you. But I think it's low, low compliment factor. Um, value for money depends on how you look at it. For me, it's very high. For some, most people, it will be very low. Yeah. Bear in mind the purpose of buying a fragrance. Uh, Marks are 10. I've thought, it, thought about it. If I was to rate this as a connoisseur, as a collector, I would give it a 10 out of 10. But I have to take care of everybody's sentiment and a balanced approach gave me 8 out of 10. I think this is a very fine vetiver scent, complex, unusual, quite amazing. 8 out of 10. Hope you enjoy the review, fellas. Take care. Bye-bye.